Good morning and welcome to day one of Introduction to Animation. I am so excited to have you back and for us to actually dig on in. Um, it feels like it's been a long haul since last Wednesday when it was announced that we were going to be moving to this remote environment and everything had to be shifted. So I hope that you have your workspace all situated and ready to go and have a schedule in place to keep yourself successful throughout this time while we are working remotely. So um, I do want to dig right in. Hopefully you've already read all of the notes that I added in our discuss or in our announcement prior to this video. If not, please do take the time to actually read that information. As noted, Basically, each day that we would typically have a class, I will post some sort of an announcement, uh, most often with a quick little video. Today's may be a little bit longer than what the normal one will be because I actually want to go through the first coding activity that is in the book. And so I also want to introduce you to Komodo which is the text editor that I am going to recommend that you use, and I'm going to show you exactly why I would recommend it. It is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux-based machines, so um, it offers flexibility that way. It also gives us all a common platform if we're all using the same um, text editor, and it's just good to experiment. I, up until um, this break, had been using BB Edit. BB Edit, though, doesn't, isn't necessarily free depending on how you get the license and everything. Komodo is absolutely free and there's no worry about them starting to charge me or wanting to charge me. So without further ado, let's just dig on in here. So this is Komodo, and you'll notice over here the neat little icon. It's like a little Komodo dragon. Um, and when it loads over on the left-hand side, it shows you your file navigation, which is really nice. So I am, for the purpose of right now, I am just saving everything onto my desktop. And so let me create a new file. And it, it's really nice. They give you that neat little menu. Right off the bat, because it is a text editor, it defaults to a text file. Not a problem. We're going to go on up. We're going to go to File, Save As. Right off the bat, make sure we're saving this the way we want it to be. I'm going to go to Desktop. And I have yet to create my folder for this class. So I'm going to right away create my CSW113 folder and say Create within here. As recommended um, in CSW 103, if you had me last semester, um, if not, welcome, and we will I'll, we'll teach you what we have been practicing already. So what we like to do is actually create folders for each of the chapters. So in the book, again, I do have a paper copy of it. You do not have to. The links and everything are within the course room. But chapter one, you've by now hopefully read and completed your intro or your initial discussion post because that is based off of chapter one. If not, pause this video, come back later on, or watch the video and then come back and revisit it later on when you're digging into chapter two. So we are in chapter two. So I'm going to just name this chapter two, and we always make sure that we are putting our last name and our first names within our folder because when we zip up our projects for submission, we zip them at the folder level, not at the file level. So this right away, make sure that that mix is nice and simple. I'm creating this. And for my file, um, there isn't really a particular name for it. What I've been doing as I'm working through this is I've been helping myself remember, okay, what a page is this activity on just because I want it associated with the chapter. So the first simple animation that we will create is on page 13 if you're in the paper book, um, but it's also, it's just the very first code that you encounter in the online book. And then of course, I'm going to put my last name on here um, just for the sake of submission purposes. And then we are creating HTML files. So right off the bat, I type in the HTML file. Down here, we can leave it as text file or go to the all file. Because we typed it in, we are making an absolute reference to the type of file, just like we studied in 103. So if we had not typed our file extension, it would have defaulted to the text file. But because we typed it in, it 
it will do what we want it to do. We are overriding the default in the system. Once I say save, notice how up on the top here, it shows me my file name. I love that it gives me my path right on top so I don't have to wonder where did I save this. Um, it is there right off the bat. So on page 13, this is great refresher. It's only been a couple weeks for those that just finished up 103. If you are coming to 113 and haven't taken 103 for a couple semesters, this is a great refresher on the basics. We will be following HTML5 for the most part. I am noticing as I work through this book, there are some elements of XHTML, and I will point that out in this particular example because there's one thing that we technically don't need when we type this in. So right off the bat, just like in HTML, we do need our doc type because we do need to tell the browser what kind of file this is, and so we hit that. Notice how when I hit enter, it automatically wants to indent. This is the default. Once you enter in a tag, it will do that. In this case, because the very first tag that I want to do is my HTML tag, I don't want that to actually be indented. That stays off to the left-hand side. I hit enter. Once I hit enter, I do want the next, well, not the next tag. At this point, I also want to go back because I'm going to put in my head hit the enter there, and just to be safe to make sure I don't forget, I'm gonna go add the body tag in right away. And in the head, the very first tag that we put into here is the title tag, and notice how it is auto-completing for me. Again, this is why I'm loving this text editor because it's even better than what um, BB Edit is. It's more responsive and I'm finding it to be more accurate. Um, and it does the complete editing for you with this stuff. So why should I have to do it? And if you notice up in the top right corner, we see that this is it. We've already picked our language, which is HTML. I could change it over HTML5 if I wanted. Our UTF, which we have been adding in our meta tag, has already been selected for us as well. Um, so we could actually do, if we do this, we can add that extra meta tag if we want. Um, for this purpose, we don't need it. Um, but feel free, don't, you know, if you want to continue to add that, please do. Follow HTML5 run this through to see if it passes the validation. Keep checking that. See what type of errors you get throughout this semester again. So I have the basic tags here. Taking a look back at page 13, the title that I actually need to incorporate this um, is the intro to CSS animations, which is where we are beginning. And then notice we are doing an embedded style tag because we are beginning off with CSS animation. So we are doing our CSS styling tags or our animation tags within our HTML file. So notice how the very first thing that you needed to apply was the body. This is the formatting that will be expected. And when I'm evaluating your submissions, this indentation is what I expect to see just as it is shown in the book. Um, the very first thing we're going to do is our padding because again that added some of the space around the body gave us that white space or whatever color we decided to put there and then we are doing a container tag here and we're so let's see yep container and here again that is where we're going to be applying some of our formatting so I'm going to do the padding just like it said and we've got that um, with Oops, can't even type virtually here. Um, we want it to be 100% of the space. We're gonna set up the height so that it's 250 pixels. Um, the background color, we're gonna notice they did this different. They did not type out all those E's. If it is repetitive like that, you can get away with that. Um, that's not something that we talked about in the first half of the semester. So as we go, we're going to learn a little bit more about this. Um, I'm going to do a command S to make sure I've saved this, or I could go up and hit my little disk. So now we've got our style tag created. All that I now need to do is go into the body and actually put some content onto this in order to apply this. So we're going to work with the div tag. This wasn't a tag we used extensively, but again, as we learned last semester, 
It is an alternative to a structure tag. We can use it just like a paragraph or um, a heading tag, any of those. Since we're working with little animations, the div tag works really nice for this. Um, if we were putting in the HTML structure tags, we would embed the, it into a structure tag, whether it was an article or into the header or into a footer or something like that. We would not allow it to stand alone. But for the purpose of this course and for us just to get our content into here, this suffices. Um, we're going to keep it simple is our goal for this. Um, once I'm in here, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image tag and I'm going to ID this as the hexagon. That way then I can do formatting using that ID tag. Um, let's see. And then I'm going to bump this down. I have to set my source. For this, I'm actually using a image that comes from a website. And so let's see. It's KI rupa.com and notice how it is located in the images folder and inside that image folder it is a svg file which we did not talk about and this is where we have a remnant of xhtml per html5 we do not need that slash there but if you chose to leave it in you would be just fine however no if you tried to validate it's not going to validate her html5 standards so with this that's our first program i have it saved it's all there now i need to make sure it actually works this is the part why i would highly recommend using this text editor is if you go up to the top here click on your view in browser and yes, we do want to do that. We want to preview. And it shows that I must have a typo within my URL. So let's see here. HTTPS colon slash slash WWKIR. Aha, I have R. I have an extra P in here. So let's see. R, U. There we go. Save this off again. And there we go. And notice how even as I was fixing it, my image was automatically updating down on the bottom. So this is showing that my very basic, just putting this within here um, is working. If I went up to the body, I could add a background color and you would start seeing, let's see, let's make it red and save this. And as soon as I hit the save, it appears down in the bottom. Um, let's actually make it purple to go with some mount colors here. So it's really nice because it keeps that live editing. As soon as you hit the save button, it does the edits down in that nice little screen. So hopefully this gave you a quick little sense of what is going to be expected, how to be doing your editing. Once again, make sure you are doing all of these exercises. Take the time to do the typing and make sure that you are developing your skills. The best way to learn in a skills-based course is by doing, experimenting, and playing around and personalizing. And that's what we're gonna be doing with a lot of our um, assignments for the projects. You will be personalizing or combining and editing stuff as we go along. So once again, welcome to Introduction to Animations. I'm looking forward to an exciting eight weeks together. Um, and hopefully in three weeks, I will actually get to meet you face to face. I do have office hours um, this morning, and then we do have our scheduled online class this afternoon, which is an optional meeting. Drop in if you can at the beginning. I will stay on for about a half hour. If people are lingering around, we will keep talking. If there's nobody there, I will drop off. Um, use the discussion forums. D2L is our mode of communication that we'll be using just to keep our emails hopefully down to a minimum um, because I don't know about you, my inbox has been inundated with messages about the coronavirus and so I don't want your emails getting lost in the shuffle. I will have hours that I'm blocking to check and interact within the um, discussion forums, both in the morning and the afternoon. So know that at least Monday through Friday, there are two opportunities each day where you will get a response. Plan accordingly though, that in a asynchronous environment like we're working, it can take 24 to 48 hours to get a response. So plan ahead, don't wait till the last minute stay in communication with me. Make sure that you're not sending a message the day before something is due. At that point, 
we can't make adjustments. I have to have an opportunity to respond in order for us to accommodate and make adjustments based on your needs or situation. I'm happy to work with you and help you in any way, shape, or form. Let's get to know these virtual tools and using videos and all of these wonderful pieces of technology to help us stay engaged just like we would in a face-to-face -face environment. So have a wonderful first day back from spring break and I hope to see you this afternoon. Have a fabulous day.